Hi, my name is Scott Strohs, and this is MySQL Shorts. Stored procedures allow us to execute multiple query operations within a single statement. We define stored procedures using SQL commands. By default, a semicolon tells MySQL that the command is completed and the command can be executed. Since our stored procedure will contain commands that need to be delimited with a semicolon, we first need to change the delimiter. We do this by using the command delimiter, followed by the character or characters we want to use as the new delimiter. In this case, we are setting forward slash forward slash as the new temporary delimiter. With the delimiter changed, we can now start to define our procedure. We define our procedure by using the create procedure command. We then specify the name of the procedure. In this case, job underscore title underscore count. After we provide the procedure name, we define the parameters. With stored procedures, we can define parameters that are passed into the procedure and parameters that are passed out from the procedure. These are called in and out parameters, respectively. In our procedure, we have one in parameter named job title, which is defined as varcar50. We also have one out parameter named title count, which is the int data type. We start defining the body of our procedure using the begin keyword. Next, we have a select query that counts the number of rows from the user table where the job title column matches the value of the job title parameter. Note we are using into to set the value of our parameter named title count to the result of the call to the count function. You can see that this command ends with a semicolon. We then use the end keyword to tell MySQL that the procedure definition is complete. Note that we use the new delimiter to end this line. This tells MySQL to execute our create procedure command. With the procedure created, we change the delimiter back to the default by executing the command delimiter semicolon. We call stored procedures by using the call command followed by the procedure name. And then we set the parameter values. Here we set the in parameter to the string cook and the out parameter to a variable named at count. We can then run select at count to see the value that was returned from the stored procedure. As you can see, there are 1,689 rows with the job title of cook. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also, there'll be a link in the description for any code or files we use during this video.